Member earlier, ladies and gentlemen, I referred to Dr. McKeown, which is part of our parish, a very beautiful place, famous in song and story, and also famous for song and story. And you remember, young Miss Tiernan told us the story of Queer at that time, earlier this evening. Now we now have some of the music of Dr. McKeown from the son of Dr. McKeown, now living in Kenop. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard Eugene O'Malley, please. Eugene, come on stage. Thank you. And accompanying Eugene, the last time I think, well, it's not the last time I saw our next uh, member, if you like, but I remember very, very late, or very, very early in the morning, the night of the morning of the election. Ladies and gentlemen, Councillor Peter Sweeney. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to tell you a little story now about when I was growing up. I was reared in a small farm in the west of Ireland. Well, the countryside was lovely, sure the locals, they were grand. Well, I was only nine years old when Yanks came to our house. They brought gallons of blackberry brandy, crates of Guinness and famous grass. I felt sick the day they landed, sure I had to go to bed, missing out on all those Yankees and the lavish life they led. But soon I was getting better, I was back again on food, and watching those Yankees mopping it up, sure I wanted to be as good. I had Guinness, I had brandy, chasers to be exact, Ah, not the star it had in me, I swear no, that's a fact. Me little sister being nice to me, she said you should have whiskey now as well. Oh, soon the old bed was spinning, what happened next I needn't tell. Me mother, she did panic, she sent a message out for dad. He jumped upon the old two-wheeler, the only transport that he had. He soon was here in Lewisburg, a doctor to pursue, a great man to diagnose the thing, God rest his soul, McHugh. As soon as he examined me, well I saw him shake his head, it's the Guinness, he said, that's the problem, man, that's underneath the bed. <laughs> well, I knew my mom was angry, not to mention my dear dad, but with all those Yankees hanging about, they couldn't show how they were mad. Well, I soon grew up, oh, I got no sense, but sure, I got myself a wife, and how often she keeps reminding me she's the saving of me life. And now, sure, we have youngsters, and it really makes me think. God rest me loving parents, and I'm still mad for the old drink. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Into or something. Have you saw the big wagon gone through Lewisburg town? Hauling me from Rona, Ascalan and Benown. The driver, John Tiernan, he's from Duff McKeown. But one morning he found himself in Craig on Bourne. How he landed up there, I could never be sure. Until John himself told me he had a detour. <laughs> oh, is that Hades Comet? Now one woman said. As she called on her husband to get out of bed. Black and white reasons those farmers don't keep, for they make their living from beef and from sheep. Oh, the donkey was running and the donkey did bray as he honked the great horn going down a straw way. <laughs> sure, everyone loves him for all the lift that he gave. And he's known far and wide with that big friendly wave. <laughs> He'll chat with the farmers and hear what they say. Sure, John won't be rushing or running away. There's a big wagon coming, the youngsters will yell. We're sure of a lift, John Tiernan's at the wheel. 
He can manage that wagon like it was a small van. God guide and protect John, our milkman. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There were masters for discipline, was Noah and Clementine. One day as I walked into class, I got this bit of choke. Come up now here, you little brat. I'm sure that I smell smoke. Oh no, teacher, oh no, teacher. I was handy with the lie. But they bet me and they slashed me, sure. They nearly made me cry. They caught me little jacket and they threw me all about. They said the way you're shaping up, you'll soon be stuffing stout. They gave a letter to me, sister, or more or less a note. They said, give that to your father, that he may shove the pipe back down his throat. Well, that evening when I left the school, my pipe I sure did fog. My sister, she gave me the note, and we buried it in the bog. <laughs> Next morning then, when we arrived, the poor teachers gave a sigh. Did you give that to your father? Yes, teacher, was my reply. Sure, they thought that I'd been crying, but what smoke was in me eyes. <laughs> there was only one girl in me class, and she often swore she'd screech. I had to pinch her for the answer. She was a little girl called Breach. <laughs> but my best friend now in that school, sure, me and him used skin. He was a bloke much like myself. Oh, a right hair case called Lean. Sure, we were young and foolish, and we thought it a great joke. Sure, he played the mouth organ, and I would have me smoke. Ah, they were two great teachers now, and that I won't deny. But sure, I could do no lessons, or wouldn't even try. Ah, yes, there were great teachers, and they laid it on the line. But was guys like me who broke the heart of Nora and Clementine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, that's long before the Chetty Tiger started rolling, you know. But he went abroad and he went and he found work. Lovely. And the next thing then he had to do was find Dave, which he did. So moved into the dates and cases in and into bed and we up early for in the morning, you know, looking sharp. But by God he was up early all right and he happened to be called. Jen downstairs and the landlady had their breakfast ready and she noticed him a bit, kind of uneasy on the chair. And she said, John, she said, did you sleep all right last night? Well, you know, Mrs. He said, I didn't sleep at all. He said, I think he said there was a dead flea. He said, up in their room. <laughs> God, she says, a dead flea. Well, she said, how would a dead flea, she said, stop you from sleeping? Well, you know, the he said, all the fleas in the city, he said, must have come in to wake him. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. May O a direct line to the west, the grandchild of Monsignor Horton, he's now gone to his rest. All the two.
as you seek. Just take the road for Lewisburg and you're cruising round the reef. Fluvial up into the road, the mountains up so high. Crow Patrick Stands out there in the sky. So if you climb that mountain, and when you reach the sky, the plains of County Mayo lie from the front and back. Eckel and Mulrani lies across the bay. You will pass Old Head and Lusburg just to view the jewelry. For the nicest place in Ireland that you could have been are the white strands all round Talapon from the church door in Chilean there are people in the churchyard who should enjoy the song they are all dead now in heaven, there never did no wrong. So when you visit Ireland and the scenery that you see, just take the road for Lusburg and it's all around the reef. Just take the road for Lusburg and it's all around the reef. Thank you very much, thank you very much. Sister Sweeney from Lusburg, let's make Sweeney's son. They went out June the 11th, they just had number one. Young man, brilliant. Whether you're living or dead, he went for the council here in West Mayo. He had on to the seat of the great March and Joe. March and Joe held it for year 44. Now Sweeney will hold it for 50 years more. Only the council. Let him down. Lake Tan Beach and Morris and right round Belclair. They elected young Sweeney because they knew that he cared. Newport and Westport, Island Lady as well. Sweeney, he did it on the road to spell. Let Carney to Drummond. And on to Ashley, they have one to Sweeney, number one on the day. Well, to elect Sweeney, it was easy work. Sure, the island stood by him, clear and in a storm. So, Sweeney from Lewisburg, they get him number one. He's the last man in Lusbor that will leave you down. Thank you very much, thank you very much.
leave it all off, you know. So I'll leave it coming in. I'm going to sing you a few. There's a young lady while walking one day. I fell in love with her and with her I did stay. We soon got married, but I'll never regret to have married the lady that's my Bernadette. We've got seven children, I am happy to say. We live for each other as we go day by day. When the children they grow up and they go away, they know there's a mother who will be caring each day. For she is the kindest, she is the heart of our home. It is something they cherish wherever they roam. When a man gets married and he settles down, his wife is Heart of his home. So now.